All right, I'm going to go first. Uh, one honorable mention for... Well, actually, before I get to my honorable mentions, just one cool thing that happened in 1998 that I'm recognizing by looking at my longer list. A lot of big directors came out with their first feature this year. So you've got Christopher Nolan with Following. This was the year that came out. Darren Aronofsky with Pi. This is the year that came out. Both of those movies are in black and white. That's pretty cool. Guy Ritchie with Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Tamara Jenkins with... Slums of Beverly Hills. It's like a crazy debut year for directors. Mm -hmm. Denis Villeneuve had his first feature this year with August 32nd on Earth. That's awesome. What was the popcorn bucket like for that film? If I tell you what that film is about, <laughs> <laughs> you would have a hell of a time coming up with a popcorn bucket for it. So how about that top 10, Brad? Cool. So uh, number 10 is Alfonso Cuaron's Great Expectations adaptation starring Ethan Hawke, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Robert De Niro. I think this is great. It's got a great performance, too, from Anne Bancroft. This was, I think, maybe my introduction to Ethan Hawke. I'm not sure that I'd seen much from him before that. Gwyneth Paltrow, he's obsessed with her. That's what Great Expectations is about, pretty much. You get it by watching this movie. Um, I thought it was very, very good. It's not, like, too fondly remembered, I'm, I'm, I would say, but I think it's wonderful. Uh, my number nine is the aforementioned Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels by Guy Ritchie, about uh, a bunch of friends who get in trouble. It's got a pre-iconic Jason Statham not being a badass, just, like, being a regular guy, which is pretty cool to watch in contrast. And it's one of the two... Like Guy Ritchie has two movies that are, I think, unassailable, and then a lot of movies that are very assailable. Um, <laughs> this is one of them. I love Lockstock. Number eight is The Big Lebowski. I don't need to tell you what The Big Lebowski is about. You all have seen it or heard of it. You two in our group chat are constantly sending each other memes about The Big Lebowski. <laughs> it's great, Cohen Brothers. You're welcome. Number seven is John McNaughton's Wild Things, which is a slimy noir, southern noir, starring Kevin Bacon, Matt Dillon. We got a fun cameo from Bill Murray. And then very notably... Nev Campbell and Denise Richards doing things in this movie that high school me was very excited about. But it's also just like a cool skeezy noir. Uh, number six is The Prince of Egypt, the which is actually very timely. We're recording this two days before Passover begins. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's the story of Moses's exodus from Egypt told in DreamWorks fashion. It, it, Simon Wells and Steve Hickner directed this, but this is a Jeffrey Katzenberg movie. It's good. It's real good. We talked about this in our Ten Commandments episode. If you want to hear us talk more about that, go back and listen to that. Uh, number five is Out of Sight. One of my favorite Steven Soderbergh movies, another heist movie. Uh, this one starring George Clooney and Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, it's great. Soderbergh was like in a real like, I'm cool. I'm slick. I'm going to make these really polished movies in the late 90s. He's not doing that anymore. Now he's making stuff on his iPhone. But he, I still like his movies. But this one was very cool. Number four is Pleasantville. Uh, Gary Ross's Pleasantville, which is a cute movie about people learning more about themselves by getting sucked into a TV show, basically, starring Tobey Maguire and Reese Witherspoon. Great performance by Joan Allen in here and a real nasty but good performance by jt walsh one um, of the great character actors of all time uh, for sure he's also up everything he was in my number three i've seen people deride this movie a lot lately but i think i think it's just because twitter is deranged but it's tony k's american history x um i think this movie is fantastic ed norton and ed furlong are uh, skinheads ed norton goes to jail comes out and tries to get his brother out of the skinheads it's like i think the last serious performance by beverly d'angelo like the last real movie she was ever in it's got a good, really scary uh, performance by Ethan Suppley. Elliot Gould as the Jewish guy in it. It's, it's good. Uh, number two is The Truman Show. Peter Weir's masterpiece about a guy who's been spied on his whole life by the entire world. This is like such an interesting derealization, depersonalization exercise if you're familiar with either of those conditions. If you have either of those conditions, I don't recommend watching it. It's great. It's sweet, beloved for a reason. And then number one is A Simple Plan. All right. So I'm going to preface this by saying I have not seen a lot of 1998 movies. My first three are movies I haven't even seen since 1998. But number 10, I have Small Soldiers. Um, I remember liking that as a kid. That's probably one that will not hold up on rewatch, but it's got some pretty funny people in it. You know, Dave Foley, um, Phil Harbin. Number nine, I have Ants. Uh, I, I like saw that. Ants. Ants is good. Ants is like Ants too. Maybe cold take, but I I like it better than A Bug's Life. Um, I saw in theater, really enjoyed it. I think uh, they're comparable. I think they're pretty close. Yeah. I would yeah, say I mean, they're it's pretty not, close. It's not crazy better, but I remember just liking it more. Number eight, I have Mulan. You know, great music, good story, fun visuals, kind of very different for, for Disney at the time. Number seven, I have Summers of Beverly Hills. Very, very fun movie. Uh, we talked about it all this episode. Number six, I have The Truman Show. It's very funny 
looking at this through lenses now when like people willingly put their whole lives on the internet now through video and, and pictures and stuff. Number five is Rushmore. Uh, I'm probably the biggest Wes Anderson fan on this call. Uh, I think some people think this is his first film because nobody saw Bottle Rocket. I really like Bottle Rocket, but I've seen Bottle Rocket. I've seen the Bottle Rocket short. It's great. It's a it's an awesome movie. I actually like it better than Rushmore, but that's where it lands on this list. Uh, I like Bottle Rocket more than Rushmore too. Uh, number four, I have a simple plan, and that's really it's it's honestly it's probably maybe you could say it's better than my top three, but my top three are like this hardened and amber because of time thing. Number three, if you thought we weren't going to talk about wrestling, you're wrong. I have Hitman Heart, Wrestling with Shadows, the the Paul J documentary covering the the last like five months of Bret Hart's WWF career. Iconic film if you're if you're a wrestling fan. Proves that the Montreal Screwjob was a work. Some say. Scott Hall says. Number two is The Big Lebowski. Just one of the all-time great comedy movies. A fantastic film. Uh, and number one, if Big Lebowski is a great comedy, this is one of my all-time favorite movies, Dirty Work. Directed <laughs> by by Bob Saget, uh, Norm MacDonald's lead. It is, I, th- I thought about this anytime I talk to somebody about Clue, I say, uh, which is one of my favorite films, I say every single thing Michael McKean does in that movie is funny. Whether it's a line he says or an action he does, it's funny. There's like four characters in Dirty Work where that is. And it's a, it's a movie my brother bought on a whim and, and like blockbuster and like the previously viewed bin. And I've watched it over and over again. It's it's tremendous. So I hate Dirty Work. I love it. You know, I'm glad. Never seen it. My number one is you hate it. I hate it. So that's my top ten. Jake. Yeah, never never did dirty work. Is I right, am gonna I'm just gonna toss out a couple of honorable mentions just because they're things that we've uh, talked about on this episode. Gods and Monsters, the aforementioned, uh, is an honorable mention. Mulan, uh, which on Kevin's list, that's an honorable mention. The uh, Affliction, for which uh, James Coburn won his Oscar, that's an honorable mention for me. And then also uh, we haven't mentioned it, but the Best Picture winner from that year that people hate on because it beats Saving Private Ryan. Shakespeare in Love is an honorable mention uh, for me that year as well. Now to get to the top 10, the other Queen Elizabeth movie from that year, Elizabeth, uh, which is Kate Blanchett's breakout role. That's my number 10. Uh, she's amazing in it. My number nine is John Borman's The General, black and white movies with Brendan Gleeson and John Voight. Uh, that's just awesome. My number 11. Ah, yeah, I do. I remember that you liked it too. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Yeah, just real quick. So Gleason plays uh, Irish, right? Yeah, Irish yeah. gang leader. It's like the departed before the departed, but like really suburban sitting on your sofa kind of guys. Uh, just like yeah. everyone's fat and angry. It's really good. Very cool. It's one I didn't see until very recently. And I just, I had to, like within the last couple of years, I had to update my list for it. Uh, my number eight is uh, the Alex Proyas film Dark City. I think if you actually watched this. I wish that I had seen this more recently so I could have a letterbox rating for it. This movie is so cool. Very cool. And you can even see like when you like, because I've watched the Matrix films recently because I watched, rewatched the three Matrix movies before the shitty fourth one came out. And guess what? Two and three are still bad too. Uh, but if some of the stuff like from the Matrix is like, I, I'm not going to say like they stole from Dark City or like they didn't have anything, but like it's reminiscent of Dark City. Like some of the stuff in the Matrix are, is very similar to some of the ideas that are out there in Dark City. And Dark City just looks really cool. Like the set designs and how the film looks, everything is really cool. And I, I know it's popular in certain circles, but I still think it's maybe a little bit underseen on the whole. My number seven is Mike Newell's Primary Colors, with John Travolta doing a very thinly veiled uh, Bill Clinton impression. Uh, actually, a pretty, pretty good movie, well acted. It's got him, Emma Thompson, uh, Kathy Bates, Oscar nominated for it. Uh, very, very good. My number six is Soderbergh's Out of Sight. Uh, Brad said a lot about it, but yeah, George Clooney, Jennifer Lopez, they're hot. Great movie, well made. I mean, just, yeah, really, really cool. My top five... These are all near or all timers for me. Um, I could maybe order these in some different ways. This is the way that I have them right now. But yeah, these top five are all just amazing. Right now I have number five as a simple plan, which yeah, we've talked about a lot. Just an outstanding movie. My number four, Brad, this is on your list, is Pleasantville. The movie just makes me smile, makes me feel good. The performances you mentioned are all great. Also, Jeff Daniels, William H. Macy, great in this. Reese Witherspoon and uh, Tobey Maguire are also uh, terrific. And Don Knotts is a nice little extended cameo, I guess. He's not in a lot of it, but it's, uh, it's a nice little part. Uh, my number three, Terrence Malick's The Thin Red Line. I love this movie. I love Terrence Malick. I do remember it got me in a lot of trouble with my high school girlfriend. I made her see it with me and she was very mad. So I had to go see like romantic comedies for like four months after this. I saw like Hope Floats and everything with Drew Barrymore and it was a rough time. And you've got mail, right? I feel like that was part of it. We've talked yep, about it. Yep. You've got mail was definitely around that time too. But I kind of um, like that. So I had it in my head that you had given me the Thin Red Line for this podcast. And so I, I haven't been watching it. I've been like avoiding it on purpose. But now I see that that's not the case. So yeah. I'll just go watch that. Maybe maybe I did at first, but then I switched to a simple plan because I I mean I think I, I definitely think you'd like it more. So that's what I might do. Have either of you seen the uh, the sketch show Birthday Boys on IFC? Probably not. No one did. No. 
there's a great sketch where people, one guy's like, hey, have you guys seen Hope Floats? And they're like, yeah, it's fine. It's nothing to write home about. And then he gets all sad and you realize he literally has written a letter home to his parents telling them about Hope Floats. <laughs> That's a good TikTok skit. Uh, then my number two, Joel and Ethan Cohen's The Big Lebowski. I adore this movie. I've seen it like a hundred times. I could probably quote it line by line. And then my number one, as Brad said, is the masterpiece by Peter Weir, The Truman Show. I just love everything about that movie. Pleasantville is, I think, a movie I saw maybe in school, but I can't remember exactly. So, like, I'm not going to put that on a list. But I'm surprised, like, it, the, the when you say, like, oh, I haven't seen these since 1998. I'm like, so Jake had a similar thing when we did our 1979 list. He just, because he didn't have 10 movies that he liked, he had movies he didn't like on the list. <laughs> That's very and I was funny. like, is that what's about to happen? No. I do remember, is that, that Fiona Apple does the cover of Across the Universe, and that video is also in the oh, setting yeah. of that. It's very fun. Fiona Apple's awesome. Yeah. Great. 